closed as well, isn't it? McDonald's has shut its doors, slammed them shut. Um, and that and that's a, that definitely caused a big sting. I think in the restaurant scene, I saw a lot of people who I follow on Twitter who are kind of industry professionals who have their own little independent places who are... I think he, the guy made an actual good point about it. I think he said something along the lines of... Um, I think I might have it here, actually, on my list of stuff. That he, a guy, a restaurant owner, made a really good point about the fact that he thinks um, Boris kind of fucked it up the way he kind of announced it. I think... They basically told people to avoid going to restaurants before they actually initiated any kind of lockdown. So what happened was that people were scared of... So I think he said people were scared of going and he saw a decrease in the number of people going to his restaurant in March that affected the way he made money and also, you know, it's going to affect how he paid his staff. And then later on, the government then goes and says, oh, you shouldn't be congregating in any restaurant. All restaurants should need to close. Um, There could have been a bit of, you know clarity in the beginning of like okay don't go to restaurants at this date no one's got so everyone kind of suffers at the same time but i guess some people who are maybe a little bit more risque some customers or patrons who didn't mind would go to other places not the other one so maybe if you were worried you might go to a mcdonald's and order it from uber eats and then not go to your local you know turkish restaurant but then that hurts them because they having to like you know keep their lights keep their doors open uh, have the staff working when no one's buying anything and that's wasting money whereas mcdonald's can get away with you know um probably surviving on just uber eats deliveries alone but again it's still a big unprecedented move from them to just completely shut it i'm assuming part of it probably had to do with the fact that most of the mcdonald's staff are on zero hour contracts so even if they did offer a uber eats delivery service how many people would they have working in each restaurant who would want to come in not a lot probably in it um, it still requires. I don't. I, I assume even if you just, even if you just had a restaurant open only for Uber Eats, I would assume it still would require a, a big workforce. You still would need, you know, maybe ten or more employees to get guarantee that it runs smoothly. Because obviously, you know, um, what they call Uber Eats drivers are what do they call them? Freelance, not freelancers, but they're like. Um, I forgot the word. There's a word for it, but they're not, you know, they're not contracted to McDonald's, so they don't, you know, that's not something that's coming out of their pocket, um, in that regard. But yeah, this is an article from uh, Eater that explains a little bit. Um, it says yeah, coronavirus is closing down a uh, huge chains. What happens to the workers? Nando's, uh, McDonald's, Costa, and Pret a Manger are all closing in response to the novel Corona. Um, over the weekend, twenty first to twenty second, uh, one McDonald's staff member who wished to remain anonymous said, um served what would be their last customer for some time um some were actively hostile making a point to grab people's hands when passing food out of the drive through or coughing on them what the fuck is wrong with people um that was before the global food chain announced it would shut all 1270 of its uk restaurants okay it always feels like there's a lot more of them than there, than there is in it 1200 obviously that's still a lot because we're a tiny nation but jesus as of monday 23rd of march from 7 p.m and i guess there were queues in it for the last meal i'm assuming right so this past weekend nando shut down its 400 plus restaurants pret a manger closed its 400 Hundred cafes and Costa shut down is two a thousand plus cafes too. These restaurants will do will not do takeout or delivery. They are closed if temporarily. Following the government um, enforced closure of restaurants and cafes on Friday evening, novel coronavirus impact on restaurant near industry is only beginning to show its hand. But interesting because I think they said also in the statement that you could do delivery. So I, I, I assume they just didn't want the hassle. Right? So I don't know. Um, and also map again saving money for them as well because everyone's also our contracts. We're not paying people hourly wages. Uh, article continues here and says those numbers might seem big new order of magnitude to reckon with as the crisis closes uh, london independent restaurant uh, and small chains consider these numbers uh, 135,000 18,000 8,000 19,000 that's how many mcdonald's lands of pretty manger cafe staff went out of work over the weekend bloody hell each company has said they will put payment measures in place mcdonald's will offer up full pay until 5th of april which is fine which i think is fair i don't think they have to do it especially with these subsidies that the governments are you know promising them um that's pretty good you know especially with the confusion look we're going to pay you up until the 5th because you know boris is an idiot but then after that we're gonna to have to wait until they give us a package to the kind of support those wages that's just fine nando's will pay for two weeks pret manger will pay until the end of april which is, which is fucking lovely cost up for eight weeks which is really really good this will give way to chancellor rishi sunak's latest financial package which guarantees 80 percent of payroll will be made available to employees for staff taxed as pay as you earn 
um, as of the 25th, 20th of April, sorry, February, sorry. This is where workers are concerned. McDonald's pay statement accounts for directly employed staff. Those working at company-owned restaurants. Oh, okay. They also take into account an average pay for the last 12 weeks, meaning staff who have been off sick on holiday or take advantage of the flexible zero hours contract may lose out. Or the ones who are working in a restaurant that's owned by like a, somebody that kind of, what do they call them? Oh, I forgot that my brain's going foggy, but yeah. So you have to be, the fortunate one is actually employed by McDonald's owned one. Bloody hell. I wonder how many of those 1,000 are actually McDonald's owned and not owned by an independent person who just kind of set one up. A franchise, right? Yeah. Um, only 8% of McDonald's restaurants are company owned 18% Jesus the rest are franchise which the crew member who witnessed the customers coughing on staff told Eater remains uh, means franchisees have full autonomy with regards to pay they say 60% of the crew at the restaurants are guaranteed hours contracts of 8, 16 or 30 and the other 40% on zero hour contracts which are not yet clearly covered in Sunak's plan measures for the zero hours contract and self-employed expected to be announced on 24th of March so tomorrow we should have more information regarding that uh, this or today basically this represents a threshold a freehold problem McDonald's have yet to communicate this pay policy to franchisees who have yet to communicate to their staff workers on already precarious flexible contracts are not secure 80% of the 8 hour per week contract on average retail sales as wages £7.18 per hour which is 190 a month with rents and bills covering currently not being reduced or frozen by the government health secretary Han Matt Hancock recently admitted himself that he could not live on the statutory sick pay of 94 pound per week the mathematics of the measures uh, based on the average of the earnings rather than being fixed by the independent baseline make precarity reproduce pre what? make precarity reproduce precarity the crew member said that those staff, at least at their store, are often students or younger people living at home. Those on 30 hours are the ones with second job. So, but again, it's, it's a longer article to read, but I don't under, I don't really see the way of fixing these sort of things because part of the reason why you'd get a job at McDonald's or at Pret is to kind of take advantage of the flexible working hours, right? Especially if you like went to work in the entertainment industry or something, right? Or you want to be an actor or whatever. It probably is advantageous to work somewhere where you can essentially work from 4 a.m. until 2 p.m. And then you can still go to your, your auditions later on in the evening, right? You can kind of mix, you know, change your hours, swap with somebody in a rotor. But if you have a 9 to 5, you can't necessarily do that. So is it a bit naive to expect the same kind of... Um, the same kind of uh, financial support or kind of job security that a nine to five person has than you do. No, isn't it really? You have to give something up. It has to be some sort of compromise. You work a flexible job that allows you to like, you know, do mornings and not do evenings. And you might have to give up some benefits that you would get if you worked in a corporation somewhere and you were locked into sitting at your desk between a certain amount of time, because then that would allow you to go to your classes or do your thing. You know, there's some things you have to give. So I'm not sure how they fix that. Is it a way of like, improving the pay overall do you raise the hourly wage for everyone still i don't think that helps in general um do you decrease the hours that's not going to happen um i don't know what the best way to do it but i just don't think that giving people who are taking advantage of flexible hours the same job security as somebody who works in nine to five that doesn't make any sense in it because that job security will also mean that you also have to give up other things too it will require you to come in more do other things you know stay longer hours. i don't know it's just there is a little bit of a give and take in these situations, but I just don't know what the right solution is. But it's good to see at least Pret, you know, doing the God's work and covering people for a long period of time. But I don't know what you do if you're McDonald's, especially if, again, if your business is kind of propped up or the reason why it's successful is because of the franchisees, right? Because people can kind of go and open their own in a set, in a you know, location they kind of maybe choose or take over. Um, that's what, what's made them a global power. So I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. That's one topic there. Let's move on. Move on here. What else do we have to talk about? Do, 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 do. Uh -oh. Let's go here. What else is on the list on there? We got oh so um talking about all this stuff, um some developments on the UFC. UFC front of things. Go. Okay. 
that's the bad thing about going out and having a jog during this stuff is going on, especially when the spring season arrives, you know, pollen counts high, your allergies rock up. And then suddenly people are thinking you have the you know, dreaded COVID nineteen when unfortunately it's just my sinus issues, but hey, what can you do?